Welcome back to At Home with the Dawkinses. Hello, friends. And welcome to the season finale, I guess. I guess so. Uh, we are once again taking a hiatus in January, just like last year. Uh, expect that to be just the default for the foreseeable future until I can hire an employee, basically. Yes. <laughs> um... <laughs> For the foreseeable future, I'm going to be taking January's off because uh, I am just one man. A very cute man, but just one man. And Allie is just one wife who has to put up with my stress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweetie. <laughs> so we are wrapping out the season with the Holiday Theme Park Report. What a na So we uh, popped into some of the parks for some of the holiday events and mm-hmm. tried some of the holiday foods, more importantly. Yes. Um... Didn't get up to Magic Mountain at all this season. No. It's, you know, it's a trek to get up there. And and I didn't head to Universal at all, so... No, I popped into Universal uh, on December 1st because that was the last day before my uh, pass was blacked out for the holiday. Um, And I was in the area anyway. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So I popped into Universal. uh, Well, I'll start with Universal. Uh, Universal is generally decent at holiday decor. They don't um, go necessarily all out the way other parks do because they don't really have settings that you can really go all out with. Yeah. Like we were talking about when we were at Disneyland, we were talking about Main Street at Christmas just looks correct. It's on point. Like like, like, uh, the Main Street aesthetic is so intertwined with that like courier and ives aesthetic that like seeing the christmas decorations on main street it's like yeah this is just always what it's supposed to look like and universal doesn't have quite as many uh themed areas with that level of detail um the sort of the main drag of universal that looks like you know 30s hollywood you know, like, Christmas wreaths and stuff hanging there doesn't look incorrect, but it's not, like, so... It's not, like, such a perfect marriage the way it is on Main Street. Um, Wizarding World just always kind of looks like Christmas because they've always got the snow caps on it. And they put, like, some, you know, tinsel or whatever around there. But also, just Wizarding World, despite once being my favorite land in the history of theme parks, is just so much less pleasant to be in now just because it's hard for me to be there without thinking of the woman who's making money off of it. Yeah. The new Secret Life of Pets area actually did a lot of cute stuff uh, for the Christmas. Oh, good. They, they, they put up a lot of cute decor. Like, they had uh, cutouts of the, uh, like, like the dog wearing antlers and uh, nice. little, like, there, there, there was, like, a Christmas uh, sort of... There's a, there are a bunch of Christmas gift boxes stacked everywhere, and one of them had like a little uh, cutout of Max. I think is the Patton Oswalt dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The formerly uh, bad person dog, mm-hmm. um, who who was like popping up and down out of the uh, out of the Christmas present. So that was really cute. And the that l- tiny little New York block where the uh, the New Yorkers yell from the window always you know, decorates for, like, New York at Christmas, and there's the one deli window where they put all the Hanukkah stuff, because, of course. But, uh, but of course, what Universal is known for at Christmas is Grinchmas. hmm And in the, uh, the Universal, uh, plaza circle there, that's where they bring out all the Whoville stuff, and they have meet and greets with the Grinch. And it was wild now that currently in L.A., uh, at theme parks, and the one theme park in L.A. is Universal. In L.A. proper, at least at Universal, masks are required both indoors and outdoors. Yeah. So even, like, the New Yorkers up in the window, who are much farther than six feet away from you, are still wearing masks as they look out of mm-hmm. what is allegedly their own window. Um, and the Grinch is wearing a face mask, which... Seems out of character. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I will say I have a, uh, a good friend that works at uh, the Florida uh, variant of uh, Universal. Who had... Don't say variant. <laughs> 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 when we're talking about face masks. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I was thinking more Marvel, but you're right. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marvel variants you can discuss in Florida only at exactly. Universal. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, yeah. So in, in the Florida variation, uh, that seems to also be happening at their Grinchmas celebration was the the Grinch was in a mask. And uh, my friend who works there would just send me just 
thousands, it feels like, of TikToks of just the Grinch in mass, just kind of like, you know, yucking it up to the camera, which was like A1 to, to behold. Here, here's the thing. I'm glad that they're actually enforcing it at Universal. Like, like I'm glad they're taking it seriously. I wish they would take it seriously enough to have vaccines be mandatory all the time at the park. Like, they're doing that weird thing where it's like, uh, uh, proof of vaccination required if there's more than, like, some odd thousand people in the park that day, but they don't tell you how many people are in the park. So it's just, at some point in the day, it's like, okay, now you have to prove like if you're entering after this point yet you have to show proof of vaccine it's like just make a show proof of vaccination at all times just make it easy <laughs> anyway um the grinchmas stuff you know despite having the aesthetic from the uh hideous ron howard grinch movie <laughs> a movie i have a complicated relationship with it exists i've probably discussed this on the show before but my take on the ron howard jim carrey grinch uh which i believe i have referred to publicly as uh, Jim Carrey's Ron Howard's Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Fucked Christine Baranski. <laughs> At least a few times, yeah. Um, there are sequences in that movie that I very much enjoy as a Dr. Seuss parody sketch. I do not enjoy it as an authentic Seuss adaptation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I admire all the cast, uh, Except, I guess, Jeffrey Tambor, since he's a creep. But mm. I admire the rest of the cast for, like, wearing uncomfortable makeup and and putting up with terrible conditions to get that movie made. It's not a good movie. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, and I never even saw the Illumination uh, Benedict Cumberbatch Grinch. Yeah. I was tentatively on board with that until I found out that Cumberbatch was doing his American accent in the movie. And then I was like... just. That, that defeats the point. Yeah. It would have been wild if he did something really interesting, like an Italian accent or a German <laughs> accent. Just like, just go, go worldwide, baby. <laughs> Someone was pointing out that there was really no reason for him to even do the American accent for Doctor Strange. Like, doc there's no reason Doctor Strange can't be British. Was he worried that he was going to get typecast as, like, Sherlock Holmes even in that role, too, though? Like, Well, here's the thing. My takeaway when I first saw the Doctor Strange movie, mm -hmm. uh, 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 the first Doctor Strange movie he's in, is like, so we have a famous British television actor playing a curmudgeonly doctor with a very specific nasally American accent who basically is motivated by the fact that he cannot cure the disaster that happened to his limbs this is just a fucking house movie. It is. It is. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, point is, despite my complicated feelings towards that movie and its aesthetic, I like when they have the stuff out from that movie. Um, I, it, it's, you know, it's not easy to turn such cartoony designs into live action. And I think for the props... They did a good job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For the characters, it's hit and miss. Yeah. But but uh, it's fun seeing like the vehicles and stuff parked around there. But yes, the only holiday food item I tried at Universal was something that looked intriguing to me was a gingerbread hot chocolate. And I was like, that's flavors that go good together. So I ordered the gingerbread hot chocolate. I immediately dropped it and spilled it everywhere. So they oh. made me a new one. I, I felt terrible, but they were very patient with me. Um, I had something similar happen once at Disneyland where I was excitedly getting my Bengal barbecue, and then the second I got it, dropped my Bengal barbecue, and they were like, here's a fresh one. <laughs> I'm sure that happens like 50 times a day. Yeah. But dropping, yeah, I just felt bad because like there was really no reason, like I was just clumsy, like, mm -hmm. like, but, but, uh. But I had the gingerbread hot chocolate, and it was disappointing. Mm. <laughs> Mainly because you could tell it was instant hot chocolate. Yeah. It tasted very watery and barely like gingerbread at all. So uh, that was a disappointment. Um, I feel like our gingerbread and espresso coffee pods that we have probably tasted more like gingerbread hot chocolate than what you got. So, And even those, you can barely taste the gingerbread yeah. in them. <laughs> Maybe uh, gingerbread just doesn't mix with drinks as well as you think it should. Mm. Even though, like, I remember when we had, when I was at Starbucks and we had the gingerbread latte, I remember that being pretty good. 
I think there are ways of doing it. It's just like there is the way to do it right and the way to do it cheap. And it's just easier for most theme yeah. parks to do it cheap. So, well, yeah. And, and like this was like at a cart in the middle of the courtyard. So I don't blame it for doing the instant like Swiss miss for its hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I like that makes sense to me, but it was disappointing because I was hoping for something a little better, but there wasn't really, at least that I saw, there wasn't really any like interesting universal foods mm -hmm. per se uh for the holiday so uh that was basically the only holiday item i had so now let's move on to uh disneyland park okay um we tried a few food items now uh dca is doing festival of holidays again disneyland no like tasting cards or anything in the park proper you just got to buy things yeah so you know we didn't seek out everything but there were a few things that caught our eye that we tried and the first thing we tried was at the uh, refreshment corner on Main Street, the holiday spicy meatball sandwich. It was it was a sandwich. Uh, your first words when you tried it were, well, better than Subway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was not that spicy. Like, I eventually, after like three bites, was like, oh, wait, there's like a pepper flake in there. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't really figure out what made it a holiday offering. It's like all I could think of. I, I I know I keep on making gestures, and my husband is looking at me just from like this is not a video, this is a podcast. <laughs> um, I, like I I just think it's probably that situation where it's like it's the holiday in the same way that like a yam is a holiday thing. I guess. I I mean I could see it being like a winter food because it's like it's a hot yeah. party meal. Yeah. And 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 I don't know maybe other people like they always gather around the meatball sub come come Christmas time. Um. My brothers do, so, yeah. So, so, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but it was just, like, it tasted like a theme park meatball sub. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it was fine. Um, <laughs> th there wasn't anything wrong with it other no, than... No, it, it just, like, it was, like, a, it was a good, solid, f like, thing. Other than calling itself spicy and not actually yeah. being that spicy, well, there, yeah, was, there that, was nothing wrong with it. But it also kind of felt like this could be done during the summer, done during the spring, done during any other time of the year. But this was apparently the time it needed to be. Yeah. The other stuff we tried in Disneyland proper were the sort of dessert-y offerings over at the Hungry Bear. Mm. Uh, so there was the pumpkin cheesecake funnel cake. It was very sweet. This was just straight up a funnel cake with like a glop of like pumpkin cheesecake, like frosting or filling yeah. in the middle and also ice cream and whipped cream. I believe I refer to it as some Thanksgiving flavored state fair bullshit. And I, I was happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you were definitely all over that, 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 that business right there. But uh... I, I love a good pumpkin pie and I like a good cheesecake. So, mm. uh, getting them all together, just getting like a glop of pumpkin pie in the middle of a funnel cake mm -hmm. and, and ice cream to boot. It, it was like, oh, it, it, it was such good nonsense. Um, we also tried the honey cold brew. Uh, Which we I really enjoyed I, a lot. Yeah, I... Um, this was also something that when I had saw it, it was, became my go-to for what I wanted to get at the park. Was that a uh, honey cold brew? Yeah, it, it, it was... Um, I'm not a big cold brew fan uh there was a there was a hot second there like part of the thing is i just do not like the taste of coffee mm -hmm. um but i have to drink coffee because i was a barista for five six years uh across different places and this is the cross you have to bear yeah, so, yeah. And, and i may be becoming a barista again at some point in the future if, mm -hmm. if money continues to be tight mm -hmm. uh not at starbucks i'm never going back to starbucks but there are other uh coffee shops that are hiring in our neighborhood yeah. so um so we'll see we'll see what comes to that but um yeah just i i eventually over years of being a barista learned how to make coffee that doesn't taste like coffee and cold brew just aside from just always tasting bitter like coffee mm -hmm. it also uh during the during the time there where I was uh, consuming cold brew a lot, my uh, blood pressure was going way the fuck up. Mm. So uh, I decided to avoid cold brew for a while. Um, but uh, this was not like that overwhelming of a cold brew bitterness. Like the, the honey topping, the honey flavoring in there, like, like it was, 
And it really was honey. It wasn't just like normal, like cold brew sweet cream. That yeah. goes with, like it tasted like a honey sweetness specifically. Yeah. And that really offset the cold brew in a really nice way. I, I, I was happy with that one. Yeah, it was like there was a drink that I had had at a coffee shop that we really liked when I lived out in uh, the Claremont area, which was uh, called Revved Up, that had sort of like a summery uh, honey uh, mm -hmm. uh, lavender drink specifically that I was really into. And um, this had kind of like the kind of the honey flavor that reminds me of that without having that overpowering lavender bouquet that would just like kick you in the teeth. <laughs> Yes, revved up uh, on Foothill Boulevard in Claremont. It's uh, you know right on Route sixty six there. It's it's a it's a lovely mm -hmm. lovely little cafe uh, with a fifties motorcycle rockabilly aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we're a fa we're we're fans. They've they've got good stuff there. Mm -hmm. So that's the holiday food and drink we had at Disneyland Park. Mm -hmm. um, while we were at Disneyland, we were going to like we were at DCA. Uh, earlier in the day, and I was going to buy the tasting card there for uh, for Festival of Holidays. And while I was in line, I mentioned to the guy in line, yeah, I've still got all my tasting tabs from Food & Wine 2020 that uh, I couldn't use for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. And and the guy there was like, oh, well, if you just bring those back, you can use those. I was like, wait, really? Yeah. Disney is saving me money? <laughs> money that I already gave them? Like, like Disney is not trying to charge me twice? So I got out of that Shocker, line. I, know. <laughs> I got out of that line. And then a little later, I was like, okay, I'm going to test this to make sure this is true. So uh, while Allie was house sitting, I popped into DCA with my Food and Wine 2020 tabs and tested it out. And I got the, uh, the shrimp and grits. And it, it was the shrimp and grits were fine. Uh, I don't think quite as good as the one we had at um, Taste of Boysenberry Fest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the shrimp and grits were fine. But more importantly, the spring 2020 tasting tabs worked in December 2021. Hey, hey. <laughs> so uh, we were like, okay, we're just going to use up these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're just going to use up the tabs. Because uh, I got the tasting card. Like, basically, right before lockdown began, I went to... Disneyland with uh, uh, Chandler was in town and uh, Tony and Sydney and Morgan and like like we just had a big group day at Disneyland mm -hmm. and for lunch we went over to DCA and I was like okay I'll I'll, I'll buy the tasting card because because uh, Allie and I will come back and I was just like I'll, I'll I'll just get one thing from this and and I got the most mediocre thing which was like pepperoni egg rolls or something that that was like a, a low rent hot pocket deal uh, yeah you you were very much like when you came back after trying that it's like god this was terrible i can't wait to try some of the better stuff next next time yes because i wanted to save the good stuff for us to try together but also on top of that we were there like uh morgan and sydney also got tasting cards and they both got a couple of things but they were like uh okay i don't need uh this tasting card anymore uh like, I'm probably, they they were both like, we're probably not going to come back before uh, Food and Wine is done. Here, Dave, you take these because mm -hmm. you uh, get a lot more uh, use out of these. You come to Disneyland as a guest a lot more often than we do. Uh, and I was like, great, I will use these all. And then basically the next week, the park was closed. Yep. And there was like a process to get refunds on them. And I tried figuring it out and I... Like, I filled out the form and then never heard back, I think. And I was like, are there more hoops I got to jump through? And I never figured that, that out. So it was nice that I actually got use out of all of them. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So uh, we tried, we basically used up all the tabs we still had. We tried the reimagined beef brisket Wellington, which was not Mediocre. great. Uh, you said it tasted like cat food. It, it, Dinty more specifically, yeah. yeah. I, I, I didn't think it was terrible but it was just like the chunks of beef were not great it, it was just a weird like like it seemed like weak ingredients used in an okay recipe yeah and also too it's like when this was served the way that the beef wellington was served it was like done so that you got the hidden mickey basically so it was, yeah, it was like, like on top of a mickey shaped non or something yeah so it wasn't really wrapped the way that beef wellington is normally is that you have it wrapped you have all the, the bits and bobs there and it's done this felt more like somebody was like trying to do like a deconstructed like beef stew basically but it didn't really turn out the way that it was it, it, i think it wanted to be yeah um it also used oikos greek yogurt in the recipe um 
I I would be willing to accept that maybe this was usually better. We just got it towards like the end of this run of ingredients yeah. or whatever. Like like it was just an off day for it. Um, same with the Reuben potato bites, which were uh, disappointing. They like, like they were I, they were better than that, but like they were still not great. They were better than the beef Wellington, but they were worse than uh, Reuben potato bites usually are at a Disney yeah. food festival. Yeah. <laughs> like the tater tots were not very crispy like and again i'm willing to accept that it was just like made an hour ago and was sitting under a heat lamp or whatever and if mm. we had gotten it when it was a fresh batch it would have tasted much better and i know supply chain issues are affecting everything so yeah and it's like my feeling kind of on the ruben potato but it's just similar to when we talk about the not stuff specifically the uh, the poutine that we had like mm. uh, which, which we will get to we will get to yeah but yeah, it was solid. It was okay. It was like, you know, it, it, it was like, it it was one of those, like, I I wanted so much better for you because I remember last time I had them, they, them being my one of my favorites from the year. Yeah, probably if we hadn't had them before, if we like hadn't had them in 2019 and loved them so much, we would not have been so, if we didn't have expectations, we wouldn't have been so disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a lesson for us all, kids. In, indeed. Never expect. But something that did live up to our expectations was the impossible chorizo queso fundido. Oh, that was solid. Uh, we had had the queso fundido uh, before. I don't remember if it was impossible meat in 2019 or if it, it was real meat. I think it was real meat, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, they've been, I, I mean, impossible has always been part of the DCA food festivals, but now that impossible is such a big part of Pim Test Kitchen, mm -hmm. they're really planting their flag in DCA. Which also, uh, to kind of like go briefly off, um, my favorite thing at Pim Test Kitchen, I think I may have said before, is uh, the bite that they offer, which is the impossible like meatball and spaghetti situation. Mm -hmm. A1, highly recommended. I think it's underrated. I know the sandwich gets a lot of the hype, but like the impossible bite go run yes indeed um the only uh weakness i think of this particular dish was that the house made chips were a little too crumbly to really scoop yeah so, yeah so so it was like uh, you just need a better chip with this but you can also just use a spoon if you just want to dump cheese in your face mm -hmm. which normally i do so hey uh another thing we really liked was the churro toffee cold brew latte that one very good <laughs> And this was one, like, it had these churro and toffee crumbles on top of this, you know, vanilla cream and this, like, whipped cream dealio. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of like, like, the cold brew itself tasted a little more cold brewy than the cold brew, than the honey mm -hmm. cold brew at Disneyland. And, like, my ideal coffee marriage would have been the toppings of this one on the honey cold brew from the other park. See, my my go-to Starbucks order recently has been the brown sugar shaken espresso um at um over there and every time i get it i want it to taste like what we had over there like this is what i think in my head this is supposed to be what mm. it tastes like and it is just you know I, which i think i might need to throw some cinnamon in there just to really get it to to shine like that but it was honestly next to like it, 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 in similar shoulders to the honey cold brew which was like perfectly balanced it was not too sweet there was a coffee flavor to it, but it was not like overwhelmingly coffee. Like it felt the most balanced out of a lot of the things that we had. Yeah. Let's see. Next we tried the Impossible Arepa Encantada uh, with dairy-free queso, plant-based meat, and onions. I was not a fan of that one. Also too, I got a big mouth of surprise olives, which is not my, 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 my favorite, so. I have uh, no frame of reference for uh, what it was supposed to taste like, so I thought it was fine. I, I mostly just liked the the cheese bread at the bottom, the fake cheese. <laughs> My thing is sort of similar to what you're saying with the tots, is that I've had really great rapists that are very crispy and hot and, like, very crunch. Like, the, the snap really hits mm. it. And I think it's just that situation where it may have been, like, you know, waiting just a smidge too long for me, so it was, like, it was really good, but it was not perfect. And, and again, I, I don't remember if I've ever had a rapa before, so, mm. uh... Who knows? Another disappointment, just because the actual thing was not nearly as interesting as it sounded from the name, was the Nashville Hot Turkey Slider. Oh god, that, yeah. So, when they said that, I expected it to be like a like a White Castle slider, like a little sandwich that was Nashville hot chicken except turkey <laughs> instead of chicken. It said what, what Disney decided to do was they decided to go into our house, seal our mattress, cut out each of the foam pieces, <laughs> and then like, bake it off. <laughs> Like, <laughs> not quite that, but it was like a little like fried turkey cutlet, you know, breaded like a chicken cutlet. 
uh, but just like on top of bread and with like a, a pickle on top. Mm-hmm. And, and and it it wasn't a sandwich. It was just sitting on top of bread. Yeah. And um, it sure didn't taste like Nashville hot chicken. No, no. Like, it's, it's it's when KFC has a more authentic version than what you're doing right there. You are doing something wrong. Here's the thing: <laughs> KFC's Nashville hot chicken doesn't taste authentic, but it tastes hot. Yes. Like it tastes like a very chemically sauce, but it's spicy. Yeah. <laughs> and this was not spicy in nothing, the least. Like nothing. There was more, like, I couldn't taste any spice on the turkey itself. I could taste a little spice on the pieces of bread that the sauce had soaked into. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the the fried turkey, like, the meat itself was a little too tough to be, like, a slider. Mm-hmm. And the, the Nashville hot sauce did not make itself known. Mm-hmm. It, I, I wanted so much more from that. I'm saying... But then something that we actually had lower expectations for, or not necessarily low expectations for, but something we were like, yeah, that's a maybe, and then we ended up getting, and ended up liking a lot more than we uh, realized we would, was the uh, avocado cheese steak. That was pretty solid, yeah. Again, not sure why it's a holiday thing. It, it's barely a California thing. Like, only the presence of avocado makes it California. Yeah. But it had, like, it was, it was a solid cheese steak. It came in, like, one of those, like... Like the kind of bags that you get like a hot dog at a ball game. In. Yeah, I think I made some joke. Is like, is this some sort of like reflection of the Mummers Parade in Philly every year or something God. like that? <laughs> but yeah, it it was a good like it 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 had um like it was a sandwich like a cheesesteak is supposed to be. It had onions, bell peppers, jalapenos, avocado spread, jack cheese, uh, and like a good tender uh you know, sandwich steak. Like, I am not a steak guy. Like, mm-hmm. steak in general is too tough for me to eat. Yeah. L- l- like, I-, I just can't chew steak. But I can do cheese steak when it's, like, sliced well and good and tender. Mm-hmm. And this was solid cheese steak. And, yeah, we were on the fence about getting this, but we were, we were happy yeah. we did. Another returning favorite, the loaded latkes, which were less disappointing this time around than the Reuben Bites. Oh, very much, very much, yeah. It was, it was, it, it's a, it, it did very well last year. I mean, two years ago for me, and it did very well again this year. So, uh, A plus. Just loaded with brisket. And the horseradish cream was made from silk non-dairy yogurt. Mm. Uh, well, because I think, I, 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 I think Disney forgot the fact that Jews don't normally mix meat and milk because they actually did <laughs> uh, sour cream on the other one with the thing. So it was like, maybe small problem. And, 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 and somebody, uh. <laughs> made them aware <laughs> it's sort of like hello hello but uh yeah it was really well done very solid very like beautifully put together like i i, I think i declared that to be one of my favorites of the uh, the festival so i believe you did um and then despite the non-dairy on that we then went all dairy with the holiday milkshake mm-hmm. a cinnamon milkshake with green whipped cream it wasn't it wasn't like flavored at all it was just green and a, uh, a a red donut on the top. Hey kids, you ever want to drink an entire bottle of Arm and Hammer? <laughs> you can today. <laughs> it was a solid shake. It, it was solid, but it was just like it really just the mint just continued to hit you. It, it 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 was strong. I think it may have been even stronger than that legit peppermint milkshake that we got at Ruby's a couple of days ago, just like for for funsies, basically. Probably. Uh, we, we tried the peppermint milkshake at Ruby's, and it was uh, very... It, it just tasted like a pureed candy cane. Yep. And that was all the food we tried at DCA. There, there was some other food, like, we thought about, but, like, we just had to... We didn't want to spend actual money. We just narrowed it down to the tabs. And also, too, like, my... I don't have a high-tier pass the way that my, my husband does, so, like, this was going to be my, my last trip for the year, no matter what, when we went. Uh-huh. So we wanted to kind of, like, get... We didn't, we didn't want to, like... Uh, waste anything basically so it was like we're gonna get them all today we're gonna get all taken care of and then we're gonna go home yes and uh yeah well i i, I think we got our two years ago money and our friends two years ago money's worth out yep. of out of those tabs and we were happy to eat so well without spending any new money yep <laughs> um there were a couple of items that looked kind of intriguing that weren't even on the tasting card mm-hmm. um but you know i i was like no, that's what the other park is for. Exactly. Um, finally, there was knots. Uh, <laughs> so our knots experience was, uh, uh, for those of you who don't live in SoCal, this has been a, a fairly rainy December by our standards. Yeah, yeah. And the day we had free to go to knots, 
it ended up raining. And we were like, well, we'll see what we can do. Because uh, if it rains too much, Knott's tends to close early. Because uh, mm-hmm. as a park, they don't necessarily have the best drainage. And most of their rides are outdoors. And, mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of them are dangerous to run in the rain. Yeah. And uh, we were running errands in Buena Park first. And while we're there, it's something like 2 p.m., and that's when I see on Instagram that Knott's has officially announced we're closing at four today. Mm-hmm. And we're like two blocks from Knott's at this point. It's like, okay, we're going to park. We're going to go in. We're going to get the food we really want to try. And we're going to go back to the car and try it. Mm-hmm. So we there were a lot of things that were on our maybe list of things to try. Like there was a pumpkin cream cheese churro that I really wanted to try. Because um, during October, Disneyland had a pumpkin spice churro at in Tomorrowland that was really good and Allie never got a chance to try it every time failed like without without question could not get a hand on it every time in October she was in the park they were sold out and now that said uh Nick just got us for Christmas the unofficial Disney Parks cookbook so uh and one of the first recipes that they had in there was for the pumpkin spice churro so one one of the recipes is the pumpkin spice churro so I don't know if the make it at home version will be the same as the bought in the Mm -hmm. park version uh, but we'll try that sometime. But uh, we did not, on this instance, try Knott's version of the pumpkin yeah. churro. Um, we might go back to Knott's before uh, Mary Farm is over to, to try a few more things. Uh, and, maybe. Yeah, and we might, you know, do a live stream to talk about the stuff that we like since you're taking January off. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if I can last more than 10 minutes in a live stream. So, you know. <laughs> um. But no, so we didn't try any of the desserts. We didn't try like the crazy ass milkshakes they have there every year. We just got the two items that caught our eye most. The turkey poutine tater bites mm-hmm. and the holiday chicken waffle tacos. Yeah. Uh, the turkey poutine tater bites were really good. They were really good. Um, and it's Dave and I are also slightly connoisseurs of making tachos at home now. So, uh, which by the way, you know, if you're looking for a fun evening... Get yourself a bag. Don't don't make nachos. Get yourself treat yourself well. Get yourself a bag of tater tots. How dare you imply that making nachos isn't treating yourself well? <laughs> like look, I'm just saying, you make yourself nachos if you like yourself. If you love yourself, you make yourself nachos. <laughs> it's just, it's the difference between surviving and thriving. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> nachos are the base level of human survival. Yeah. <laughs> Tachos are the next. I mean, it it depends on what mood you're in. <laughs> True. Um. But this was, yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, it was layer of tater tots, gravy, and, and uh, you know, uh, little chopped, diced bits of turkey, mm-hmm. cheese curds on top. Perfection. Yeah. It, it, like, it, it was like a good, hot, like, holiday turkey. Mm-hmm. It, l- l- like, like, it tasted, like, it wasn't like a, a, a gimmicky fried turkey or anything. No gimmicky sauce. It just tasted like Thanksgiving. Yeah. But in a tater tot poutine, it was like, mm-hmm. oh, it, it was so good. The cheese curds were like huge. Uh, it was perfection. It, it was like the right recipe with the right ingredients. Um, it was the DiGiorno of, of tots, you know, like, <laughs> or is it better? Is it Caesars was just better ingredients, better pizza? Like, <laughs> I forget which one uses that, but they're all lying. Yeah. <laughs> And then the holiday chicken waffle tacos, I think I liked a little more than you did. Yeah, it was, it was fine. It was just, yeah. It was interesting because it was just the usual uh, shredded chicken that uh, Knott's uses in all of their chicken tacos. Mm -hmm. But instead of a taco shell, it was a waffle and it was a fruit based salsa. And it was interesting Mm -hmm. to have that like normal chicken that I'm expecting with the normal taco, but all the more desserty fruity elements. Yeah. And, 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 and as I told you, I think 1,000% the reason I didn't love this is that I have a weird thing about waffles. Like, if they, they can get a little bit soggy, but if they get too soggy, it's just inedible for me. This might be another one that would have been better if we ate it right away, because by yeah. the time we got back to the car, oh. like, the waffles were soaked through and, and not had only, no structural integrity. Not only ate it right away, but if it wasn't raining, where I think if the extra humidity was, like, continuing yeah. to the degradation of it, it was like, yeah. Yeah, pr- pretty much. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, the ingredients, like, I liked... Garden salsa and, like, fruit, like, sweet salsas, those are not my preferred type of salsa. I can enjoy a garden salsa when I'm in the mood for it, but, uh... 
Like, I like a good mango habanero salsa, but it's got to be, it's very specific reasons that it's happening. It's like I'm layering it with a little bit of guacamole. I got a really solid chip that's like a, a that's two steering it. It's like, yeah. I also prefer a salsa to be more habanero than mango. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm one of those people who like, uh, I have cousins that we usually stay with at Thanksgiving who always get the Tostitos with lime. And I do not like the baked Ooh, in lime to the Tostitos. No. It, it's like, I don't want fruit in my chip. I want, I want, I want spice. I want vegetable or tomato, which is a fruit that's a vegetable. Also straight up, like those, those chips taste like, like calcium, like chalk. Cause they use like a chalk to get that oh, yeah. flavor in there. So, mm. yeah. So I'm not, I'm not a fan of like. Wait, your cousins are white. <laughs> <laughs> You've met them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan, like, like, general, like, I understand culturally the association of lime with tortilla chips, mm -hmm. but I don't need it. <laughs> and, but if I'm going to have it, I guess I would prefer real lime to the baked in Tostitos lime. Yeah, but. It's, it's like, for me, it's like, you got to have it, like, fresh out, just to be able to squeeze a little, the little wedge, like, on top of it, it hits the spot. But yeah, I, I don't need lime with my chips. I don't need fruit flavors with my chips but in this case thinking of it more like a waffle dish than like a taco i was like I, I i can get on board with this and again a garden salsa i can enjoy if i'm in the mood for it but yeah. it, it is not my go-to salsa yeah um so yeah we might go back to knots to try a few more things uh but we knew we wouldn't have time to go back before we recorded this episode <laughs> um, nope 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 so uh, when you see the vlog of Mary Farm 2021 about eight years from now, then you can hear about the rest of the uh, things we try. Yes. If we go back. Yes. We make no promises. We promise nothing. But we deliver. <laughs> uh, so we're not DiGiorno's. No, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that wraps up the 2021 season for At Home with the Dogginses. Thank you so much for all your support this past year. Thank you for your continued support in the future. If you are not able to continue your support, we understand. But mm -hmm. just thank you for listening to us and for helping the nonsense I make be slightly more of a financial priority than it would be otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for enjoying the stuff we do, for... Uh, helping us out in general and uh if you have any topics that you would like us to cover on this podcast in the new year comment below yes please let us know because uh when we have no other ideas we're just like okay should we watch something on criterion and talk about it yeah and if you, and i know that those are not our most listened to episodes so like if you'd like to help you know turn the tide of that specifically comment down let your opinions be heard. Yes. Ryan Hip, we're talking to you specifically. <laughs> You're always talking to Ryan specifically. Yeah, I know. But we love you all. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, and yeah, let, let us know what you want us to talk about in the new year. If you have any questions you'd like us to answer. Um, it's been a while since we've done a Q&A episode, but uh, I think... For now, I would like to, uh, instead of doing a regular Q&A episode, just... Uh, do episodes where we address individual questions like it like if you give us a topic prompt we will talk about that for the length of an episode we will we will so uh yeah leave your comment let us know and uh until february this has been at home with the dogginses later days y'all later days